Hello, McWarriors! How is it going? And welcome to another episode of Rogue Tag. Guys, I'm excited today because I have some things in mind that I want to do with you today. First of all, I want to build a new mech, maybe even two, and I think I want to leave this planet because I am here for some higher challenges. So let's talk about the mechs first. Obviously, we're going to go to the mech bay, and as you can see, we got a bushwhacker here. That thing is a beauty. By the way, the camo pattern is absolute garbage. Let me quickly change that to something that... Ooh, shiny shiny blue is cool i like that so this guy here it already comes with composite structure that's absolutely fantastic it is kind of broken right now but it has a radical double heat sink kit it has an emergency coolant system the medium heavy improved laser is fine we have an mrm10 with acid ammo an angel ecm small advanced cockpit and advanced optics which is not that good anymore optics has been nerfed but I think it's kind of okay because it was kind of OP to begin with. Um, I'm quite kind of happy with it. Not not happy, but I'm okay with it. So now we get an advanced zoom that provides one accuracy bonus up to 390 meters, uh, depending on how big the uh, optics is. So we have a Mark III here, so 390 is uh, where we are, which is okay. We are getting a plus one bonus to accuracy in medium range. Then we have an advanced zoom which negates no visuals, which is so damn crucial in the early game, up to 20, uh, 260 meters. And it allows us to detect minefields. Who cares about that? I don't. So yeah, it is not exciting anymore, but it is something that you probably want, especially in the early game, so I'm very excited to put that maybe on this guy here, uh, maybe on our Kintaro, because we need that no sensor penalty to go away. Actually, I'll take it out for the moment, because that guy needs a bit of time anyways. Stability Gyro. By the way, that thing changed as well. We now get, I mean, as always, entrenched after walking. That's really nice. Negative 15% stability damage taken, but also negative 20 stability damage to self when firing large weapons. Effect stacks. So that means that the, the whole like artillery self knockdown chance fire system, it got reworked in a way that there is not a flat chance anymore, but you just take stability, which makes so much sense. And now bigger mechs with, with higher stability thresholds can just take it and then just brace next round again. Or uh, you have these things here, which reduce the amount of stability you take to yourself. That is a very nice way to balance that. I love it. Also, we got Angel ECM, which we probably don't need right now. I think it can stay here. All right, so that being said, it takes 316,000 C builds and 11 days to get it done. I think what I want is I want to put it to the top of the order, also get the Kintaro ready and all of the other guys as well. Uh, by the way, the second mech might be the Chameleon that we are looking at today. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to wait for this month um, to pass, and I kind of hope that we get some duels that we can still play and then probably go to another planet. Also... The Argo is not being upgraded right now. We still need improved power conduits and structural reinforcements to get the third mech bay. <sighs> this gives us a tech point at the very least, but it is expensive as hell, comparatively. Wait, this is this is not cheaper, right? Yeah, it's the same. But yeah, let's go with the tech point and the morale then. It's good to have these things going so that our, our Argo is a bit more stable in terms of power and people can play their video games and charge their phones a bit better. It really helps with the morale. We have enough money. Looking good. All right, I'm gonna press the button now. We're gonna wait for the financial report. And then I, again, I hope that we find a duel or two because now we are almost bankrupt. <laughs> this is the spot that I wanna be in. <laughs> oh my God. For all of you guys watching my Twitch playthrough, we have the complete opposite. We have a lot of money, but not a lot of good tech. So it's kind of weird there. Still have a bunch of days, um, but we have our whacker here that is ready to go. So let's take a look at the command center. If there's a solo duel, I'm 100% willing to take that. And there is. All right. I got a solo in the jungle. We got a duo as well. And, okay, that's a destroy base mission. Which we could also take. It's great salvage. And honestly, good money as well. Yeah, there are some missions here that I probably want to play. But this is against Marek. Uh, this is uh, probably as well, huh? The outcome is too good to uh, let it slide, though. I know I want to get some reputation, but duels, I think I'm going to make an exception here. They are very good to gather um, items, equipment, and money. So, I think we are ready. No, wait. 
wait, we need two more days for our people to come back out of fatigue. And I think it's also worth taking a look at our barracks real quick, because we haven't done that in a while. So, Terror Bird, what is your deal? What do you want to do? You are lucky for better clustering and jam chance reduction. You would be a great MML carrier. Um, military technician. So you have the recoil reduction. So we could either go for Ducker, like auto cannons, with the jam chance multiplier of 10%. It makes sense. Um, and we also have to focus out oh, like the, the, the rec recoil reduction. We can also add focus fire on you so that we have a negative two on that. Or we go full missile and just use this as a better clustering option. I do like the focus fire though. We go with that. And you know what? We're gonna we're gonna get you a little bit more. Okay, here we go. So Belfagor, whatever, don't care. Um Chronic Toast is one of our main pilots. He is reckless, which is good for evasion ignore. That's really nice. He's not what is naive? Naive does nothing. Like no active. That's probably something that pops up in an event. Mech Warrior, dependable. He's like a jack of all trades. He could be anything. Am I even going for one active uh, gunnery stuff here? I might not. I might not. There's no good reason to stack anything. I mean, the crit chance is good. Mm. Hey, you know what? This guy might be. Yeah. An escapist. To mitigate his uh, evasion reduction, um, I'm gonna go with this. Evasive pips are immune to sensor lock is also good when you have somebody that is uh, not generating that much evasion because you don't want... You know what? I'm gonna go with escapists. Fine. So now that we have the second uh, passive, we can now just push gunnery without any remorse. That's great. We also have uh, Lafay, who is an active member of the squad. We'll take a look at her. She's military. She's also naive. She's honest, which is also just relevant. Yeah, I wanted to say. For uh, events, but it also gives us one morale. And she's periphery, so she could be anything as well. I think I want another, like, focused fire person for more ballistic shenanigans. All right, here we go. Tank girl, not here. Terra bird is fine. Visla. Get some piloting, I guess. Actually, no. I think I want gunnery 6 and tactic 6 before anything else. And then there's Yuki Ona, which should be one of our main pilots because she has so many good things here. She is assassin and military for a total of plus four to OP accuracy. Ah oh man, I need her. We should actively put her in a mech so she can get some experience. All right, but I'm gonna put her into like a like a multi-fight scenario. The solo duel. Let's go for it. Um, money is garbage. Or is it? Not necessarily. We could go both ways. But you know what? I'm still in the in the process of acquiring things, so we're gonna go with maximum salvage again. I know it's just random, but um, yeah, let's go with this. Isla, you are getting there. All right, five gunnery, five tactics. Here we go, guys. Let's do it. All right, guys. Broad daylight. We are in the jungle. We have our mimetic armor and our uh, stealth situation. So here's what we do. We're gonna go to the right side. The enemy will come up from here, hopefully. What is it? Hermes! Hermes 2! Okay, I think we can deal with the guy. So let's go ahead and just move. Actually, if we sprint, we get four. That is evasion. Yeah. I'm gonna use my long range to try to hit that guy. Here we go. No, that was not a good shot. I can't imagine that... Oh. This guy wants to come to the front line and brawl with me, but honestly, I'm fine with that if he stays there. Ultra 5. Oh, I would love that. I would totally love that. Okay, just move. Keep a bit of our aim stability by not sprinting around like crazy. And we got some nice hits in there. He's down to the lasers. His ballistic might unjam, by the way. Oh yeah, and you were, you guys were asking. Hold up, I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna take a very quick, very quick check here. You were asking for me to go down here. Is that better now? I think it is. Okay. So. Back into it. He did not unjam his autocannon, which is absolutely fantastic for us. 
I want to maintain direct unobstructed line of sight, ideally, but also move. There's no place I can get that. So this would be... Yeah, it would be bad. Also, I think we have no sensors. Right? We have a very low hit chance. One sec. He's also in a spore cloud, and we have no sensors, so that's, that's a turn where we just run away. Goodbye. I'm not here anymore. We want to keep him at the distance because our weapons all have a minimum range. All of them. So I hope that our sensors are better now. Okay. Eh, it seems like it. Uh, he... Okay, he is unjammed. Bit of missile damage. It's important to soften them up before he reaches the front line. Then we're gonna get into a brawl. Yeah, man, this bushwhacker is not a great uh, unit for duels because... They will tighten up in the current state that we are in. Oh. I think that's the spot. Let's go for it. Enable all the LRMs. Nice, another hit on the leg. That's good. That's good because now we're gonna start kicking this guy. And I'm actually here for this auto cannon. We also gotta get lucky and also get the ammo for it. But hey. Let's go. We only have one pick. That's the thing that we got to keep in mind. Mm, let's go for a kick on the side. See what we can do. Ooh, it's a miss. It is a miss. He still has his auto cannon, And I don't know what else. Alright. Your turn, buddy. We are unsteady. You can go for it. One flamer, one medium pulse laser. No auto cannon fired. Okay. He also moved for five evasion this round. It's not easy to hit. Man, we need more piloting if you want to play these duels correctly. Full backstrike? Not a thing I want, really. But we had a better hit chance on the kick. Oh, that's because we can only punch from here. That would be also a kick. Uh, sure. Let's go for it. Come on, hit him. It's a miss again! By 27%. Big one. It wasn't even close, but we hit him with the auto cannon on the leg. That's exactly what I want. His hip is destroyed. Um, it penalizes his movement a little bit. Another flamer attempt. As long as that is happening, I'm perfectly fine with it. I really feel like our chameleon LPS is kind of helping us. So 66 on the leg attack. Come on. Oh, it's another miss by 11%. <laughs> No! Weapons hit. Oh, it's such an awkward dance that we are dancing here. And he's slowly but surely grinding through my armor. It's not that we are getting super crit, but I want to keep my uh, repair cost at a minimum. Now we're also getting a mildly hot. Okay, nope. PPC then. That should settle it. 66% guys! Here we go. Yes, that's what we want! Nice! Now we need to hit the other leg as well, somehow. Or do that. We won! Hey! Beggars are not gonna be any choosers here. Okay. So, down goes the guy. Duel number one, done. And I'm sorry, Marix. I really like you. Please like me back. <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, we want to probably play some like bigger missions with uh, higher payout at some point, and that payout could also be just reputation. There's also an option to not go... Ooh, hold up. That might be a thing. Playing duels, getting one salvage, and not taking any extra money, but reputation bonuses instead. You can forego that in order to persuade these guys a bit more. So I have the feeling that was an ammo blowout. Mm, yeah, I'll take the ultra. Give me everything else. Sadly, this thing completely collapsed, so our maximum salvage is reduced to what we see here. Uh, but we also got a medium pulse laser and some basic stuff that gives us about 30,000. So yeah, we got that. We have an Ultra Auto Cannon 5 now, um, which I would gladly use on my Wakaronis. It's just double the amount of firepower for just one extra ton. So good. So damn good. What we need is ammo, though. So we need to find it somehow. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is now, we're going to take a look at the store. I don't think that the store is necessarily going to give us what we want, but uh, it's a new month, so taking a look at that always makes sense. 
Okay. Yo. No sense of penalty, man. It's it's crippling. It's crippling so hard early on. Good. Waka waka. All of them are in five days. Mm. So, quick check. I need to remember. There is a duo duel. I think ideally I want to bring my Waka and my Kentaro. So the X6 is the new one, correct? Let's go. Wait for the Kentaro, stop it here, and actually put the um, advanced sensors in it. Advanced optics. Ooh, carry capacity. Do we have enough? Yeah, it's only a ton. Ooh. Okay, so that makes it actually more viable because usually I think it was like kind of like a percentage of the mech. It seems to be only one ton now. That's great. Lower leg destroyed, that's okay. So yes, we have our brawling situation going here. Mm hmm Okay, so we have another day. And I wanted to take a look at the store to see if I can find Ultra Auto Cannon 5 ammo. Chasseur! Hmm, no, Prowler. Prowler is good though. Prowler is a nice little tank. 55 tons, decent armor, good mobility, and it brings uh, an LRM-10 and two medium lasers to the table. So nothing too crazy, but it's it's fine. Handheld MML-3, I don't care. There's a Canary. All right. So that thing is zero ton and only one slot. Interesting. It's not equipable. It uses, it's used straight from the Argo storage. Nice. Wait, hold up. Is it consumed when used? The beacon provides an alternate unit for systems that deploy units in combat. It is consumed upon use. Oh, you have to have a lot of them and they are expensive. Oh, no. Okay, what does it give us? Active probe AOE sensor lock establishes a uh, sensor lock on all enemies within 30 meters radius. That's nothing. Okay. Okay. Negative 75% uh, sensor stealth signature reduction. Okay. Three charges of mimetic stealth visibility. Okay. It's really hard to detect. Which is good. Jams the enemy by one in 180 meters. It provides ECM cover by two. And it can detect things. Oh god, this thing is expensive. The fact that it is consumed upon use, which makes sense, it is a UAV. Oh man, it makes it not viable in the early game for me right now. That might be something that we want to try out in the mid game, where we have a bit better income. Uh, we can make a lamb appointment, we have a slug shot here. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Mm, yeah, we're gonna go for the Kentaro. Put it up on par with the Waka so we can play instantly. And get into the next mission. Here we go, guys. Do a duel. It's again against the Marix. No, no, no. So since we are playing against two enemies, there is a higher chance for overall salvage. The one out of seven might be good here. The money is nothing to sneeze at either. <laughs> I can reduce my reputation even further if I want to. No, it's not a thing we want. Ah, screw it. I'm going to get a bit of money as well. All right, Kentaro. Get Terra Bird in here. I think we're ready. Yeah, looking good. Let's go. All right, second game of the day. We are playing in the water. We have a bad rain going on. Everybody gets a plus one defense due to decreased visibility. Let's go then. Uh, all right, we're gonna sprint. Oh, we have sensors with searchlight. That's a thing that is really helpful. Yeah, man, our Kintaro wants to be a short-range brawler. Let's actually turn this on. It doesn't cost us anything. And we found some enemies. They're right here. Should have maybe waited. Yeah, let them come to us. It's usually better. We found a Locust, though. It's not too dangerous so far. Has a lot of evasion. That's a crab. Uh, yeah. Hitting the guy is hard, especially when you have, like, no sensors again, right? Is that what it is? Zero percent, basically. Twelve percent on the autocannon. That thing can jam, though. Ah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, yes, combat lock on. I wish we had both, by the way. Combat lock and floaties. The crap 27 with a rebuild. RE medium lasers and small X-Pulse. That thing's dangerous! Ooh, the armor damage. 
I think I want to try to stay away from him. Get... Hold on the Locust. Why are we not hitting this guy? No sensors. Huh. He's too far away for us to negate it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna fire. Our SRMs also have a, uh, a chance to, you know, jam. Let the crab come in. Okay. Hmm, 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 hmm. I'm gonna try to corner him. Maybe we can get something done with a melee attack. Locust didn't do anything, though. That's very convenient. We're gonna reserve because our Kintaro is here to maybe get the kick attack out. No rockets yet, though. We have... Why do we still have the no sensors penalty? I thought I put my optics in here. Does it not work? Does it not work? L let's attack him. I mean, we got the kick. At the very least, there's that. And now we have perfect hit chance. Yeah. So we got what we wanted, but it was kind of awkward. Seems like the optics are not working as intended. Alright. Good. So, Locust down. Crab is still running around. That's also fine for me. Where, where's my spot? I think it's here. Oh, so yeah. Since he's lying on the ground, we have a penalty to hit him. That's kind of like D&D &D mechanics. That thing has also an ECM shield. Very nice. Oh, the street cleaners out there, I hope you cannot hear it, but it's kind of blaring in my ears right now. Uh, yeah, and he is... Actually. Uh, he's prone, so that gives him a plus two for defense. And it helps him. Alright. So no hit on our side. But since he lost a leg, he is gonna be really slow on his feet now. Huh. But still dangerous. Alright. What, what a duel here. Interesting. So we go for another kick. Do we shoot everything? I don't know. Yeah. Let's go for it. It's a miss on the kick. So, what's it gonna be? I think we attach the Narc, which is gonna be a massive, a major benefit for us. Because it gives us more accuracy, and even more accuracy if we use missile weapons. And we do, on the Waka. Just need to get into our optimal desired range, which is here. Wait. Ah! So this is it. I know it's obstructed, but we're gonna take it anyway. We got him. That's a lot of heat. Something blew up. Yeah, probably ammunition. Now, we gotta deal with the crab somehow. Oh, nope. Give him another turn. There we go, he wasted it. And I will use my Kintaro first. Again, the Narc, it's gonna be so good. Let's get close. Hell yeah, I even shoot my rockets immediately. We got the Narc on. Lots of missile damage. Love to see it. So here comes the long-range support from the Waka. Uh-huh. PPC, I believe, hit. Which scrambles his sensors. Dude, it's part of me wants to try the new ammo type. And I think we should. Wait, don't we have it yet? Or was it the other playthrough where we got slug ammo for the SRMs? I don't know. There's a lot of goodies in here. But hey, crap has armor. <laughs> wow. It's coming in. And yes, that's what I mean. It's gonna hurt my armor like crazy when, when he's going in. Yeah, they have a lot of pinpoint. Pinpoint damage. Ah! I maneuvered myself in the wrong spot. That's deep water. I cannot cross it. Ooh, baby. So, a bit of indirect fire here. That is only 15 damage. He has Harjel. Wow. Where's his weak spot? It's here, right? We want to attack from that... From that side. Let's go. Kick the leg. Unsteady. Perfect hit chance. Maybe we lag him. Yeah, the last hit on the laser. Nice. It's hard shell. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 
Gotcha. Little crab here. What kind of... Wait. So you're just running Harshal 1. It's just the the individual stuff. So you're not, not like this heavy ferro carbide armor. I cannot remember the name of it. Which, like the super armor. It has an emergency cooling system though. Endo steel, ultralight gyro. Pretty good. Yep. It's a hero in a hard shell. Um, XL engine. It seems like it. Seems like it. We're gonna end this here. We don't have a lot of... Yeah. We don't have a lot of salvage anyway, so might as well just take this thing down and just go with what we can find on the battlefield. Now I wish I went through with more random salvage, because there's really good stuff in there. Mm. But hey, the money is fine as well. We need that. We need that to upgrade to the third mech bay. That thing will take us back... Uh, I think one and a half million sea bills or two million roughly and we still have to upgrade the structural um, reinforcements as well so I think it's about two mil that we need for that Guardian ECM hmm having an ECM on everybody early on seems like a good idea place fire it's all right okay I kind of want a sheath beacon that thing is fantastic. It also allows us to sensor ping the enemy. There's an emergency coolant system, which is also really good. Nova fire control system for negative 15% heat generated with lasers, but it doesn't give us any accuracy. Then, of course, the Harshal. We got the Guardian ECM. Patchwork. Double heat sinks. There's a sword? Wait. Crab had a sword? Melee mech incoming? You know what? The Kentaro could use it. Double heatsink kit. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. So if we want to build our friend, the other Waka, we need a kit. Hmm. What's more important? I think firepower is more important. And firepower is kept by heat, and heat is mitigated by a double heatsink kit. I like the... I really do like the beacon. It's a very good item. Don't get me wrong. It is really good. It's massively good. It's so good, man. <laughs> but I think I need this more than anything else. Let's go with it. Like the good old standard early game upgrades. Double heat sinks, XL engines, stuff like that. We're gonna go with it. We get two parts of mechs and we also get upper hardened. So our actuators are a bit more protected. Don't really care about that right now. But hey, it's good to have. So guys, now we need to make decisions. Do we stay on this planet a bit longer or do we just take our stuff and go to another planet where we have more reliable one and a half to two skull missions because i am looking for good stuff what i do like about this planet is that it can spawn duels so we could stay here and farm a little longer but these duels are as you can see a lot of times against marik so i don't know if we just got unlucky or if it's all the time but hmm all right let's go we have about, I would say, 20 days until everything is repaired. And we could use that time to navigate now. I would like to play this as well. Assassination 1 Skull. Everything else is kind of garbage. Okay, let's take a look. Where are we? Uh, this is where the Argo is. There's a two and a half right around the corner in 18 days. This is kind of perfect. Half Skull. Don't care. <laughs> Atzenbruck? <laughs> For all of these German guys out there, you know what I'm laughing at. That's a two skull. Kogel. 26 days though. It's a bit more dangerous, but it's closer. Kogel is better. It's a desert world though. Oh, it's hot. Mining recreation. So, what do we have here? Forests. Mud flats. Research. Tropical world. I believe this is the better one. Let's go to Atzenbrook. Also, it's a funnier name. Yeah, it's gonna be harder, but I think we can manage. <laughs> Let's go. Um, unexpected debris. Deploy the leopard to destroy the debris. Uh, did I ever have that? What's gonna happen here? The leopard. I think this will kind of 
drop our mech tech efficiency? Both might. I'm gonna deploy the leopard. Oh, negative four tech points. Wow. Wow, that hurts so bad. Okay. So Chameleon is also one of my priority mechs right now. But hey, let's let's just order from top to bottom. Argo upgrade complete. Yes, thank you. I want the structural reinforcements now. It's gonna take a good chunk of our money away again. And we have 14 days to get that straight. But we will arrive in 7 days. So there's that. Okay, we need a, we need a mission that gives us a little bit of money as well. As well as salvage. Alright. All work orders complete. The crew is ready for the next job. We have still three days. Oh boy. So what do we prioritize now? Uh, the fire starter is under tonnage. It got crit. Alright, we need a double heatsink and two jump jets uh, to fill it up. Uh, yes, we have some. Good. One double is here. We got two jump jets, so no big deal. It's exactly three days. That's good. And we can bring it back. Currently running a bunch of these uh, medium lasers. And peel and stick armor. It's better than Harshal. I mean, is it? You could say yes and you could say no. Because it also provides extra armor. So we have the four main mechs ready. You are running a double heatsink kit. Everybody is, right? Yeah. Okay. So... Oh wait, that being said, this guy is running a, a built-in radical. Oh, I didn't even need to pick the other one, except for the chameleon to be online. A lot of people said I should run the chameleon because it's a good mech. And I think I agree. I think I agree. We need an engine for it now. Which we do have. 220 is fine for a 55 tonner. It still gets us a good amount of mobility. We don't have to go so hard. 4 and 6 is acceptable. The Wacker would be just better, right? When thinking about the build, we have five tons more. Yeah, kind of. Okay, let me go back to the Wacker and see what we can do with this guy. For a 55 tonner, a 220 is, I would say, on the edge of my of my mobility. Right? It's also 4.6. Never mind, it's absolutely fine. So, just by adding this, we have a viable build going on. But we need armor. Hmm. Another 10 days. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna validate that and we have something to do while we are still moving around. So, in three days we're gonna reach the planet. The fire starter will be ready. We have to take a look at ugh, the catapult. Uh, we're gonna supervise. It's gonna be fun. Morale is decreased. Come on, guys. Come on. We're getting a lot of negative events here. So, visit store. We have a Mortar Inner Sphere Battle Armor Squad, which we could... We could take four parts of it and, and have it. Ah, but I don't really care. Auto Cannon 2, Auto Cannon 10, ELRM. It's not bad. <sighs> Turret Mount? We need to acquire 375,000 sea bills. That thing I want to get. Yes. It's a great opportunity. Uh, actually, we could probably sell the Talon. Whoop. There we go. And you know what? Before I forget, I'm gonna get this thing. I'm gonna get it right now. So what do we drop? There is a Rock 5. There is a Snub that I would probably use. We have some Streaks. I mean, I'm not really a fan of the streaks. I feel like the weight investment is a bit too big. Yes, Taser Rifle exists. We have a C3I. That could also go. And I think we are already good. Case 2 can also go. Standard Engine 120. Yeah, get out of here. We got TSM. We should probably make use of our Taser Rifle. That thing is good. Mm, primitive Sensors can go. Okay. So, now... No, we're ready to get the turret mount. Um, I think I'm gonna wait another upgrade cycle before I put it in a mech. Right now, I just wanna get on the battlefield. Quick check on the hiring hall. We find Mirage. Just cautious. Nothing else? Alright. 
There's Harpy. Harpy is ex-military MacWarrior Commander Technician Spacer. The tech is good. Is that worth it? I mean, we don't even have the room for her. Third hand. There's Gonzo. There's Bear. Yeah, I don't really care about these guys. Let's get into trouble, guys. Let's do it. Command Center. I'm looking for like a two skull mission for Marek. That's one and a half battle in the jungle. I wonder, can we go for two and a half already? Let's play this to get a, like an overview and a bit of a lay of the land here. And yes, we need a bit more money. Huh. So these picks go up by one. Except for the last one, which only gives us three extra random. So this could be an option. 705,000 plus three out of 12. I like it. I like the idea. We could get two reputation per salvage that we don't take. I don't really want to grind it too hard, you know what I mean? Yeah, we need to think about our finances. Let's go with this. Uh, we have our Hermes ready. We have the Firestarter ready. And obviously some people to go with them. And... Well, let's go to Faye. There we go. By the way, for all of you wondering what this is, it pops up here. You can put battle armor directly on your mechs and start with them attached to the mech. That's a really cool idea. I don't have battle armor yet, but I definitely want to try it out. So, um, yeah, I really hope that we can find a nice battle armor squad at some point. But right now, we're just gonna deploy. So, guys, it seems like we are here. We have a support lance already, which honestly I don't like too much. But we got the high ground, and that means we're gonna start right here on the hill. We're gonna drop everything, everybody, on the same spot and just shoot from above that's my goal we have a good chunk of long range we also have some brawlers ready to intercept let's see what is coming got a hermit crab a flying urban mech lamb 2 uh oh we got a flurby a flying herby we also got another hermit crab and oh a shadow cat a pea shadow cat is that the like the regular pea shadow cat with the machine guns and the gauss or is it a uh, pirate shadow cat. We're playing against the pirates, so I believe the letter. Okay. Um, by the way, if you have this kind of weird bug where there are so many pips and you cannot even go there, hit left alt and it's gone again. Let us move to the high ground, but also take cover. Let's not expose ourselves. The goal is to destroy the flying Irby. Incubus. Incubus! Our Incubus. Look at this guy. Yeah, let's destroy Flying Irby and then go for it. What are you? Karnov, double ER medium. Kind of lame. There's a main gauge with a light Gauss rifle. I'm very happy to see it. And there's also a flea down there. Okay, so you also want to get to the high ground. Pretty good. So what about the fire starter? I think holding the first round is a good idea. So we brace it up. Kintaro is also just a move and brace. Should have turned on the searchlights, but okay. Yeah, we also have some serious firepower sitting here on the right flank, also on the high ground, able to shoot down below. Alright. Are we in active combat? Yes, we are in round number three. Double light PPC, I believe, was that. It's 30 damage to a flying unit, so yeah, light PPCs. On the hermit crabs. Another one. There we go. The flea is moving. Oh, they actually got some missiles. It's four damage per missile. I mean, yes, right. We are in cover. So, a bit of damage reduction on our side. How much do you have? Seven evasion, man. Seven. Could I hit you? I think the answer is no. So, we're gonna wait for them to come to me. Let them waste their first round shooting whatever they can, which is hopefully not me. And then we're gonna go in. Shadowcat. Missiles. So yeah, pirate ATMs, I believe, is what he's running. But he's lighting up my cover. Ugh, go away. I don't like that. The extra heat is not gonna be nice. Commando. What, what was that? A mortar? No. Okay. So almost all of them have moved except for Irby. We gotta wait for this guy. Incubus, get the flea, come on. Or 
maybe don't do anything. So weird. Yes, perfect. No, not perfect. That hurts. Holy crap. Oh god. Irby, Irby, don't do that to me, please. What did I ever do to you? Not nothing yet, but I will. Um Yeah, we wait for turn 12, get Terra Bird a turn, because she can bring a Narc to the table, and she also has a sensor with search light. I will drop my rockets. I think we attached the narc. Yes, yes, we have the narc attached. There's a little blinking uh, thing here. That means we got him. That means we can now hit him with better accuracy. It was a beep here. Was there a beep? Did you hear that? Kind of weird. And that's one Irby down. All right, pretty good. What was the beeping sound? Was it in-game? Hmm, weird. All right, cut off. They are not shooting. Come on, friends. You need to help a bit. Seems like we got no sensors again, right? Yes, no sensors. This needs to be changed so badly. Uh, let's go for the stuff that we can hit a bit better, which is the hermit crap. Looking good so far. One energy down. We got an ear medium laser destroyed. Gotcha. Okay. Fire starter. Mm-hmm. Also have the sensor problems. It's no good hit chance here. Again, no sense. We need better tactics and better electronics. Oh, you could have taken the sheath beacon. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. All right, here we go. Large lasers on our friend, the Hermes. Oh, finally, a hit chance. We stay on the crab. Got an arm down. Hermes already damaged. Wait, what? I thought the Kintaro got damaged. Oh no, it was Hermes. <gasps> I was miss, miss uh, seeing that. Okay. Crab is running. Still shooting though. Okay, just checking my 3D printer. I don't know if he was, or it was, making these weird sounds. Okay, okay, okay. So far, so good. Shadowcat, I think this is our end boss. I think this guy has the most crazy stuff in it that we probably want to take out relatively quickly. Ah, oh, okay, so the fire starter is able to go for... Ah, it's just a charge, never mind. Uh, we stay in cover. We're gonna try to hit what we can. Grenades and Inferno grenades and an SRM-4 pirate. Mm, let the commando come to us. I don't want to get counter-attacked in melee. TSM on. On the Shadowcat, by the way. So, you're now more mobile and you do more melee damage. Interesting. Let's move. And I think I want the commando out of the way. Still dangerous with his kicks and stuff. Mmm, yeah. So sadly, we didn't get the narc. But we have a good chunk of damage on him. And there are still some units that we can follow up with. So our friend the Karnov. Do a thing, come on. I guess that's a thing. So, we have some viable options. Um, it's... Nah, the commando is not really a good one for our Waka, because it is not in a good line of sight situation. Is this obstructed? It's kind of orange-ish. Is this obstructed? Yeah, it is. Somewhere. Somewhere we break line of sight. So that, whoop, that would be a spot where we have perfect line of sight. Okay, so if you only get three evasion, but that's it. Let's go for the crap then. Okay, he's open. A jump jet is destroyed, but that's it. He's also unsettled. Main gosh. Nothing.
I could now kick the commando. It is risky, but I'm willing to do it. Yep, we hit. Good. And that should be the kill. Hopefully. It is not. The damage spread all over the place. Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie. He's down to 15. Wait a sec. Am I checking my initiative? The Kintaro could finish. So I could actually get more to the high ground. Yeah, that's good. The Hermes has the ER large lasers, so it makes a lot of sense getting that thing to the back line. All right, let's go for it. Not what I wanted. He's unsteady now. Mm. Oh wait, wasn't he before because of the kick? He must have. The flea. Nothing. Okay. Mm, get wrecked. Oh no. Oh, we dumped a lot of damage into our fire starter. <laughs> Stray shots are no joke, man. Not from the Kintaro. That SRM barrage, it actually hurts. Crazy. Hermit crap. 20 damage. The good news is we still have front armor. Oh man, I already feel like kind of anxious about my light mech. In this scenario here, we are still on par with our enemies. But that might change. The more medium mechs we fight, the more damage will be on the battlefield, and the more we are in danger of losing components with the fire starter. So I think we also need to upgrade to mediums. Crap. Luckily going for the Karnov. But yeah. It got destroyed. Incubus, do a thing. You could call that a thing. Nice. Triple hit on the same component as well. So that's uh, 39 damage to the arm. Light Gauss hits the Hermit. Very nice. We're gonna follow up on that. But we need to get. We also need to do something about the jam chances. <laughs> it's so nasty. So, Hermit lost the side torso, but it's not destroyed yet. Let's, uh, let's change that. By going in here and unloading some medium lasers. This is not quite it. And of course he would win the initiative here. Oh no. Uh-huh. Very happy about that. They're going for the friendly tank. Now what? Incubus. To the center, man. To the center. Yeah, he dealt damage. And the Hermit Crab is stressed. But what's he gonna do against my fire starter? He might be able to go for a kick or a punch or any kind of melee attack. He's not able to sprint right now. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. So that worked out. I think it's a good idea to use our fire starter as the finisher on the Hermit Crab. This way he'd be able to move back a little bit. And we're gonna use our high ground situation to contest the Shadow Cat in the low ground. I think... Uh, where do I go for the other Hermit Crab? The chance is the same and the Hermit Crab is double light PPC plus it's only a 25 tonner. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I think going for the squishies first and taking out firepower is a good idea. Main Gosh is pulling back, not shooting. Bad. Flea. Flea 19. Bunch of machine guns. And it seems like they're also running flamers. Alright then. You know what? I guess we have no sensors again. Yeah. Anyway, it's our best bet to stay on the Hermit Crab right now. I'm very confident that our Fire Starter can take down the other one right here. And just to make sure, I'm also gonna go for a kick attack. Here we go. Uh, I mean, if we miss it, we have no evasion. But the firepower from the lasers is gonna solve the problem. And I think he's in a good spot there. She is in a good spot there. Okay. So that frees up some... Of my concerns. Hmm. Is this my angle? 
Yeah, I want the attack from the side. It gives us a better hit chance overall. Fire. Yeah, very nice. We took one of the light PPCs out. That is firepower away. Great. So, the flea is running. Um, we have the ER Larges who want to do a thing. We should have sensors. Six evasion. We'd run through the fire. Uh, it's, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. 48% only. 53 on the Shadow Cat, 35 on the Flea. I'm gonna stay on one target and miss completely. Yeah, man, again, Hermes ate some damage early on, and the PPCs of the Shadow Cat, they are no joke. They actually deal a quite good chunk of damage. So our side torso and our arm both are in danger, especially the arm. He might rip it off. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Stay in motion. Get the... Oh, man! Ah! ah I guess we get the Shadow Cat then. I was misinterpreting the situation. I thought the Shadow Cat was attacking us, and I was... Uh, I was kind of confused why it didn't more, do more damage. It was actually the Hermit Crab, my oversight here. Now we're going in. Okay, just indirect fire with the Hydra ammo. Okay. Honestly, Hydra ammo would be very nice for us as well. For our LRM shenanigans. Can only end up in the fire. Uh, is that the price we pay? Or I can get up there with a low chance. I think I need my mech on the front. Let's get it in there. I know, it's very suboptimal. And you know what? I'm gonna take that turn to cool down. Incubus, come on, do a thing! Nothing. 50-50 on the kick. I am not a fan of that. And again, a back strike. Actually, it's good. He has only 10 armor in the back. It's better than to grind through the, through the side torso. That's, uh, that's like a 5 evasion situation that I want. Let's go with this. And uh, try to hit something. Cool. We did! Down goes the Hermit Crab. The main gosh tries to get the Light Gauss on point, but the Shadow Cat is too dodgy. 6 evasion is quite a good chunk, man. And that's why I want my Kintaro there, so we can go for a bit more melee burst. Like, close range burst. Hermes, yeah. Are you fine there? Let's be real, you are not. But you have 6 evasion, and that is, I think, the extent of my defense that I can get right now, so I don't want to give that up. Now let's hold for the moment. Turn 15. Turn 13 is gonna be... <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, the dangerous one with the Shadow Cat P. Flee? I don't really care. Ooh, maybe I should. That is a lot of armor damage. You're running heavy machine guns of some sort, right? That's four and three armor damage per shot. I should not underestimate the flea. Wow. Yeah, I'll take that shot now. Shadow Kite is next target. Absolutely. Maybe we can cripple him a little bit. Yep. Yeah, like that. Taking away his uh, ERPPC pirate. Yes! Makes him uh, way less dangerous than before. Here comes the Kentaro. Yes, we go point blank. Sight also about to pop. Love to see it. And the Kentaro is still fresh, so it's a good target for the Shadow Cat to take. That's right. That was 55 damage. We didn't have 55 armor and structure on that arm again, so that's why I'm so hesitant about where to put my where to put my Hermes. It's not good. It's not good at all. Shall we just run away? Ah, this guy has line of sight everywhere, so we might as well just be aggressive. Left side twist. Like this. 
Because the right side is endangered, and I want to keep my lasers. That is it. It's the better defense. <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Um, yeah, Firestarter is going to go for it now. Let's drop the flea. Maybe we can kind of crush him with a nice legging or something like that. Just good old kick, leg sweep, roundhouse kick, you name it. Let's go. This might be his last turn. And he wants to make it count. That's amazing. This little guy is shredding. Okay, so we wait. We want to make him unsteady before anything else. And I want Lefay for it. Unless Terra Bird... No, Terra Bird cannot do it. So we're going to wait for turn 13. Here we go. Step a little bit to the side. Make sure that we don't end up in the fire. Alright. Stray shots are still a thing. So let's make sure. Very nice. He's cored. Okay, then. Yeah, perfect. Your chance. I mean, 73. It's not perfect, but it's, I think it's as good as it gets right now. Leg down. We halved him. That was a light machine gun. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. But hey. We did it. All right, guys. I think this is the extent of... Like, difficulty that we can take reasonably. Uh, I was a bit unlucky that our Hermes got hit early on, and he was kind of the guy who was endangered most of the time. The other guys were kind of okay still. Um, but uh, what I want to say is, probably one skull higher is where I want to go with this. So two and a half is, I would say, already the top end of our difficulty that I am comfortable with. But hey, we got 732,000 C bills out of it, as well as a good chunk of stuff. I don't want the Hermit Crab, I don't want the Flea, I don't want the Commando. So don't mind if I get all of these options here. And then I also get plus two reputation, so we accept. Absolutely. We have a total of 12 picks, so we could take the Hermit Crab. Which comes with Ferro Fibers and the Double Heat Sink Kit, both viable. And a bunch of Double Heat Sinks and a Light PPC. Hmm. That's not bad. This thing we will probably completely disassemble. Clan Pharaoh. Composite structure. A PPC computer. That's new. Two PPC accuracy. 25% more damage and 50% more heat. And also night vision. And it also enables battle computers. That thing is a crazy sniper, a PPC thing. Wow. Any assassin pilot that runs this thing with some peeps is gonna go crazy. Comes with a sheath beacon as well. Proto heat sinks, double XL gyro, double XL engine. You got a headshot battle computer. Supercharger. You got no battle computers? We're gonna disassemble that thing. That's so interesting. Alright. I want to take a look at the other mech before we do anything else. Uh, we're going to go through the list, obviously. But let's also take a look at the Flying Irby. It's, uh, it's a lamb. It is a lamb with an Ultra 5 and Ultra 5 ammo. It's not pickable. We've got to disassemble. Oh my god. What the hell are we doing with this? There are so many options, so many directions that we can go now. Okay, guys. Uh, we've got to do something about this. How do we do it? SRM Acid Ammo is also extremely good for our Kintaro. That thing is so good. We deal 50% more damage to armor, so we just shred the enemies. And the enemy also take 1% more damage for two turns. That stacks. We currently fire 20 SRM, so it would be a plus 20 if all of them hit. So let's be real. I'm gonna assume that 50%, it's a 10% bonus to the damage that follows up, but the 50% armor shredding bonus is massive. Negative one accuracy though. Machine gun array light, yes, lamb turbine, okay. This is tempting. It enables more damage. And it's 50 shots. So I could also take the other ultra autocannon, have two of them, and then 
run a double bin and be fine. We could go ballistic on this. Spike helmet, negative gunnery, negative piloting, but guts and negative tactics. We get more charge attack damage out. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, the PPC battle computer, by the way, also seems to stack with capacitors. I, I'm freaking out here. Ultra 5, yet again, wonderful weapon. I love it. I kind of want to get it. Um, Proto heatsink, yes, fine. I do like a cheese beacon. It is... How much How much uh, sensor bonus do we get? None, actually. It doesn't give you a flat sensor bonus, it seems. Yeah. So it is actually not that great. Yes, we can ping with this, and that kind of helps, but... Mm. 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 Ferrofibrous, fantastic. Lamb Endosteel, we have one. I'm gonna skip that then. Defensive Gyro, we have one. Double XL Gyro... Yeah, fine. Uh, Lamb Pharaoh, we also have that. And a supercharger. Alright. Oh, hold up. It's unique. It's unique to the cat. That fire control system is a fixed item that doesn't work if you drop uh, and, and disassemble it. So it is unique to the shadow cat. Which makes sense, otherwise it would be very OP to have on any mech you want. Alright, so we don't have to think and, and kind of kind of grind our thoughts about that thing anymore. It is not here. Right? No, I think it converted to a PPC capacitor when disassembling. So, in that case, I will take my beacon now. Hermit Crep is good. It's actually good. I think we're gonna take it for some double heat sinks, for a uh, double heat sink kit, which is just raw money for us. The core we can sell, and it comes with ferro, which we are lacking currently. So it's a nice way to only have invest have to invest one priority pick and get our random salvage kind of kind of covered already. That's fine. We got two extra picks. So what's it gonna be? Um, Clan ferro. It's good. Composite is really good. But I think what I want more is the Ultra 5. We cannot take it. Why? Um, something's not working. Hold up. Give me ammo. Give me the 5. The total doesn't add up. The total doesn't add up. Okay, so we have already picked three. I see, I see, I see. So could I do this then? You only have ten salvage. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, uh, hmm, ha! No, I want these ultras. This is this is a, this is non-negotiable. I want these. So we're gonna also disassemble the hermit crab to just pick another thing. Uh, we gotta get lucky with this then. I know it gives us a lot of value, but I I need to prioritize some things so that we get stronger. So let's get stronger. That's a stack of seven double heat sinks, man. It's not bad. Um, acid ammo fine. Uh, bolt on fine. Light PPC fine. I think I want this and call it a day, correct? The double ultra. Double heatsink kit would be great for money, but I don't really care about that right now. Light PPC is alright. I feel like we're gonna get some random stuff here. There's a lot of standard fire control system shenanigans. Yeah, and I think that I particularly value. The beacon, that's a thing. Beacon better than Pharaoh? Yeah. Beacon better than Pharaoh. Gives us an immediate boost. Um, where's Beacon? There we go. Okay, the ability to sensor ping people is fantastic. So we're gonna take that. And we're also gonna get an ER medium, a grenade. That's cool. Nice handheld item that we can utilize early on. We also have a Grenade Inferno, Pirate SRM. We get a basic cockpit, the stack of seven 
double heat sinks. We get Lam Ando Steel and a bunch of jump jets that I will actually keep around because we might want to utilize them. So I would say not super exciting, but still worth it. We also get a good chunk of money out of that. And we can now build a ballistic uh, Wackeroni. I don't know if we have more than one ballistic uh, hard points on any of these, but as soon as we find another mech that runs two, we definitely have a double Ultra 5 setup that I'm very excited to get done. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a rating, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.